Hello, my name is Rebecca Lady. Um, I am uh, the owner of my company, which is Inspiro 8 Studios. I am an architectural photographer, and um, I've owned my own company uh, for about 15 years now. Um, I actually started off uh, as an interior designer. My uh, background, my uh, bachelor's degree, my education is uh, interior design, which was through the College of Architecture um, at the University of Florida. And I worked in that field for probably, um, oh gosh, like 10 years. Um, and uh, worked in Florida, and then uh, we moved here to Greenville, and I worked here for a little while, and then I took some time off and did some small projects. Um, and it was about 2014, so it's been um, about five years now that I've been practicing architectural photography. And I got um, into that, actually, through uh, doing some photo shoots for some of the, uh, my projects that I had designed, um, and I just really loved the whole aspect of it. Um, I loved being able to see the projects when they were totally complete. Um, I've always loved photography, even in uh, college, high school and college. I got my first camera and played around with it. I had no idea what I was doing. Um, but I did some traveling in college, and I took my camera with me, and I, I loved it. So I have always loved photography. And um, then it was just sort of, um, sort of a natural progression into uh, doing photography, but just for um, architecture. So... What I do is um, I take photos of buildings and interiors and exteriors, and I do uh, residential, and I do commercial work. And um, most of my clients are, um, you know, builders, um, architects, uh, interior designers. Um, I do some stuff for um, retail stores. Um, some developers. Um, I do some work for magazines, like they'll hire me to, to uh, photograph homes or commercial spaces um, for publication. Um, but a lot of my work um, is directly for the designers and the builders and um, the architects, and then they can use my work to market their uh, projects. So, um, the question is, include details uh, like if you always knew you do this, which I said, um, unsuccessful work experiences or promotions that led you to your current job. Well, like I said, when I was doing um, interior design, I um, that's a very stressful job. There are things that can go wrong, um, orders that come in that are wrong, uh, things that happen that you know you have no control over, um, furniture that just gets stuck uh, in customs or uh, builders that build something wrong and. Um, it was just a ton of stress, and it was a lot of meetings and time away from my kids at home. And um, so when I started thinking about doing architectural photography, uh, the thing that really attracted me to it was the fact that um, it was still in the design field, which is my passion. I've just always uh, loved architecture since going through school. The interior design um, college is in, or the the major is in the College of Architecture at University of Florida where I went. So it was a very architectural based degree that I got uh, that taught us to think about design and spatial relationships and color and balance. So um, I'm still in that, which is really cool. I have a real appreciation for it and I feel like uh, there's no way that I would be able to do what I'm doing now, um, shooting uh, architecture, if I didn't have that background. Um, so the actual um, education of learning photography um, I had to do on my own. I'd actually thought about uh, whether or not it would be smart of me to go back um, to get a degree in art in uh, photography but I felt like at this point I, kn I knew what I needed to learn um, that I, I could really teach myself. It didn't seem like as long as you can take good photographs, that um, people didn't really care if I had a degree or not. They just wanted to see good photographs. So I, um, that's what I concentrated on. I knew what I needed to learn, and I'm a good learner. So I taught myself. I, I purchased uh, online classes, and I self-taught while I had time, while I was still practicing interior design, and um, just learned everything about the camera, everything about the lenses, everything about the software. Um, and then of course there's a lot of trial and error when you first start. There's 
a lot of mistakes that are made early on, um, but people were very forgiving at the beginning. And um, I had a lot of clients that I knew already from being in the design business um, that uh, I was able to work with right off the bat. So um, it was a it, it was an, it was a good transition for me in there, just starting small and then um, working larger now. So. Um, schooling and her experience. I said that. So job info. Um, let's see. What does an average day look like for me? So my days are kind of split uh, half and half. Uh, because I shoot architecture, I'm always out on the field. So I'm either on location shooting or I'm here. I, I work out of my house. Um, I've got a studio here in my house and I edit here. So um, I like to try to uh, do a couple of photo shoots a week. Um, sometimes they're all day. A, a full day photo shoot for a house or a commercial project can take me six to eight hours of shooting. Um, and I, I go more for quality than quantity. So the end of those shoots, I'm probably going to end up with anywhere between 25 and maybe 40 um, good finished photos at the very end. Um, a half day might take four hours, and so then I'll just split my day up and do the shoot in the morning and then come back and edit um, in the afternoon. So it works out really nice. Um, I love both aspects. I like the variety. I like, um, I really like the editing process. It's very creative. It's very technical, um, but it's also very creative. That's the artistic part. The on-site um, I'm just out there with the, the client who would be the architect or designer or builder. Um, but a lot of times they just let me take the shots that I see. I sort of know what they're looking for, what the spaces that they're going to want. And um, the really cool thing, the some of the technology aspect that I had to learn um, was how to, how to tether the camera to, um, you can either do it with a, you know, a laptop. I use my iPad, um, with this little cam ranger. And so I can show my clients exactly what the, um, what the photo is going to look like. These are, uh, images taken in raw form and then they can see what the, what the image is, how it's set up and we can make changes right there on the spot. And then once it's captured in this raw format, then when I um, upload it to um, the computer, then uh, I can make all the adjustments in Lightroom on the computer, and, um, and then I end up with a final photo. So um, hardest part of my job um, is probably the physical aspect of it. It's exhausting. Um, just there's a lot of equipment to um, carry back and forth. It's physically demanding. You're on your feet. When you're on location, you're on your feet the entire time. And so when I first started with it, I was exhausted. Um, I've gotten used to it now, but that's probably the hardest part. Um, the best part is um, just the people I get to work with um, out on location, the beautiful architecture I get to see on a daily basis. And... Um, the flexibility to work for myself, um, my hours, I can schedule work days whenever I want to, um, and I can take days off when I need to, and it's, it's very flexible, so that part's really nice. Um, it's a lot of work. It is, I'm, I work all the time. I work on the weekends, I work in the evenings, I'll take my laptop and I'll sit in front of the TV and <laughs> watch movies and edit. Um, you can ask my kids, I'm always editing but I, I enjoy it I, I love it um, and so it's for me it's worth it um, let's see long-term career goals and advice uh, long-term career goals I guess I really enjoy um, getting work published in magazines that's thrilling for me that's kind of like my highlight so um, to I've done a couple of uh, photo shoots where I've gotten published in national magazines and I guess that would be something I would enjoy um, pursuing um, and advice to students um, there's a there's a lot of levels that you can learn um, you know when you start off you learn a certain amount but there's always room for improvement I am I am constantly learning I'm constantly improving I'm constantly trying to figure out how to um, actually um, improve my editing, improve the quality. Um, so I would just say never stop learning. There's always room to grow. Um, 
And I think a job outlook for architectural photography, um, it seems pretty good. I mean, I think this is probably during this uh, COVID-19 pandemic is a really tough time for a lot of people. I've been pretty steady um, just because it's just me. Um, so I, it's pretty flexible for me to kind of go in and out of buildings. I don't have a huge team. I have very low overhead. Um, so, uh, and, and, you know, people either have a ton of work because they're very busy. Um, and so there's a lot to shoot. The market's really great or, um, there's not a lot going on and they, my clients are looking for ways to market themselves and to further their businesses. And so they call me in slow times to catch up on projects. So I've kind of been pretty steady, um, you know, for at least the last five years. So the outlook I think is, is pretty good. Um, so anyway, that's all I have and, um, good luck.